Hi, my name is Matthias, and I'm the creator of MyMix. Today, we would like to talk about in-ear. In-ear monitoring, in combination with personal monitor mixing, is becoming extremely popular, and for good reasons. If you implement in-ear correctly, everybody benefits, and I mean everybody. The musicians will hear themselves better and therefore play better. And they have reproducible high quality every time they rehearse or play. It doesn't matter if the, the room is full or empty. It will always sound the same. The audience will benefit because the room will sound better without those spilling wedges. And it doesn't matter if it's a 100-seater or 10,000-seater. Wedges shouldn't be on stage in a house of worship. But if you implement in-ear incorrectly, it can be a very frustrating experience for everybody. I teach a lot of classes, and almost all the time, half of my audience is already on in-ear, and they don't like it. Things like, it just doesn't feel right. I'm kind of distant to the audience. It's like driving down the car with a window open. It, it just is not right. That's a typical sign in-ear has not been implemented correctly. So what do you need to know to implement correctly? Well, first of all, you need to understand that everything we do is in 3D sound. If you have a wedge on stage, and that wedge represents the sound the way you want it, most likely with your instrument up, it comes out of that wedge with the whole band in there with a certain dispersion angle. When you move around, the sound changes. But you not only hear the drum out of that wedge, you also hear the drum behind you and the bass player there. Because everything is in three dimension. It doesn't matter if the wedge is good or bad. Everything is in 3D sound. Now, when you go in here, you just lost the room. And now it's very important to get that room information back or you will struggle. In our industry, we use a lot of mono signals. There is no mono in nature. When we communicate, there's always a time delay between your left ear and your right ear. And that's good, therefore, we can orient where we are. And this information is lost if you send mono signals. So now imagine you put a, a stage the size of 10 or 20 yards in your head with all the musicians stacked on top of each other. It is very hard to differentiate when you play. We call that a typical mono trap. And when you start playing and you can't hear all the instruments the way you want, on top, your brain is looking for time delays, which you won't find. And within a short amount of time, you will be fatigued. And you think, oh, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's not my day. It has nothing to do with your day. You don't get the right information. So what do you need to do? Well, first of all, we highly recommend that you pan according to the setup. So if your drummer is on the right side, well, pan him to the right. If your bass player is on the left, well, pan him to the left. That way, you have a two-dimensional sound. And now comes the way more important thing. You need to add stereo effects on every channel, not just the vocals, on every channel according to your taste, that you get that three-dimensional sound image. If you do that, you open up a whole new world for the musicians. And what we do, we have demos, and we like to demo for you, where you go 3D sound, no 3D sound, 3D sound, no 3D sound. It's mind-boggling the difference. This is really fundamental. We from MyMix believe that musicians are there to perform, not to mix. Don't overwhelm them. They are not front-of-house engineers. And therefore, spec sheets can be very misleading. They look very good on spec sheet, 40 channels, parametric EQs, and uh, you know, ambient microphones. All of that looks wonderful. But in real life, things don't work out that way. We had parametrics on our tone control in the guinea pig phase, and almost all the musicians fuddled around with them and muddied down their sound. They didn't know what a high shelf and a low shelf is and the consequences of doing it. The engineers do, but the musicians don't. So as a consequence, we took it off and replaced it with a tone control, which is a very musical tone control where you do bass and treble. They understand it, it's easy, it's intuitive, makes everybody comfortable. It's the same with the channels. Of course it looks impressive, 40 channels, 50 channels, 30 channels, all of that. But we believe 
40 channels is a full-time job of a front of house engineer, not for a musician. Again, musicians are there to perform, not to mix. You can't mix 60 channels, 40 channels, 32 channels. That's not going to work. And by the way, it's not needed. I'll give you an example. If you have a big praise band, 10 band members, eight backup vocals. Chances are none of the backup vocals want any individual band members. None of the band members most likely want any individual backup vocals, yet the backup vocals want all backup vocals individually because they're singing to it. It's the same in the, in the band. The drummer wants kick, snare, tom-tom, overhead, and so on. While most of the other band members say, give me a drum submix. So even when we had to deal with big orchestra, we had 50-piece orchestra, none of them needed more than 12, 14, or 16 channels. It's unnecessary, and it makes life a lot easier. One of the tendencies we see in our industry is that a lot of people copy each other for good or for bad. And what we see a lot lately on Personal Monitor Mixer is that people added a little microphone in the Personal Monitor Mixer device. And we don't believe that that is such a good idea because at the end of the day, where will this device end up? For the drummer, it will be next to the drum setup. So what do you think it's going to pick up? The drum spill the stage noise, but not the audience. If you want ambience on your mix, well, I recommend that a front of house does that with the right microphone into the audience, and then you have it. So very often, spec sheets don't tell the whole story. Summary, please go in here in combination with personal monitor mixing. It is the right decision. But make sure that you have all the information needed to choose the right amount. We believe the person operating the personal monitor mixing is a musician, so don't overwhelm him. And by the way, we did a checklist on how to choose a personal monitor mixer system. If you'd like to get it, please send us an email at info at mymixaudio.com.